with that in mind, then I will call this May 12th, 2021 meeting of the James City County Planning Commission Working Group to order. Ms. Cook, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. O'Connor? Present. Mr. O'Connor is an at-large member. Ms. Leverins? Here. Ms. Leverins is an at-large member. Mr. Polster? Here. Mr. Polster represents the Jamestown District. Dr. Rose? Here. Dr. Rose represents the Roberts District. Ms. Null? Present. Ms. Null represents the Stonehouse District. Mr. Kropp? Here. Mr. Kropp represents the Powhatan District. Mr. Haldeman? Here. Mr. Haldeman represents the Berkeley District and is Chair of the Planning Commission. Ms. Wortman? Here. Ms. Wortman represents the Community Participation Team. We have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just like to remind everybody to please use the raise hand uh, icon just to expedite things. I'll, uh, I'll promise to do my best to recognize people. Uh, as you all know, on April 13th, 2021, the Board of Supervisors readopted the continuity of government ordinance, which under certain circumstances permits this committee to conduct today's meeting by electronic or telephonic means without a quorum of mem members physically present. You all have a resolution to that effect in your packet. May I have a motion, please, for adoption of that resolution for tonight's meeting? So moved, Barbara. Thanks, Barbara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, um, Ms. Cook, would you please uh, make any introductions? Thank you. Yes, I am Ellen Cook, Principal Planner, and joining me today from James City County are Paul Holt, Tammy Rosario, Thomas Wysong, Tom Leininger, Tori Haynes, and John Reisinger. Also joining us are our partners in this comprehensive plan update, our consultants Vlad Grilovic and Todd Gordon from EPRPC and Leanne King from Clarion Associates. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I neglected to uh, ask um, Ms. Cook if there are any public uh, comments received relevant to tonight's meeting. We did not receive any public comments for the meeting today. Great. Thank you. Um, approved minutes, uh, no minutes here. Uh, we'll move on to the comprehensive plan name. Uh, Ms. King, would you please yes. take it? Thank you. If I could, I'm going to um, share my screen here. This is the same list that we shared. Hopefully everybody can see that now um, up on your screen. Um, as you may recall, at our, uh, the last Planning Commission Working Group meeting on May 3rd, um, there was a discussion about the um, 15 different ide uh, name ideas for the comprehensive plan that were shared by various working group members. And um, each of you had an opportunity to um, select a few options of preferred names. And so we've got that um, showing up on the screen here today. We wanted to um, bring this back to this meeting because um, some of the members weren't um, able to, to weigh in in the last meeting. And so wanted to have one more opportunity to see if everyone was um, comfortable with the direction this was heading in or had any additional thoughts or, or votes that they wanted to share. Um, so as you can see on the screen here, there were um, three different um, names for the plan that got kind of a number one ranking by uh, members and uh, the number six there, our county, our future um, JCC 2021 comprehensive plan actually received four votes. So we were getting some traction on that name and um, wanted to bring this back and see if, if others liked that name as well or wanted to weigh in on one of the other options. So um, any kind of thoughts or reactions, particularly for folks that maybe weren't at the meeting on May 3rd when we discussed this? I, uh, this is Rob. I, I, I wasn't at that meeting. I apologize, but I agree that number six is really a standout choice. Great. Okay. So there's um, and this is Rich. Um, I'm fine with that one. I was leaning towards on my earlier preferences, uh, having the word shared in there. And so I leaned more towards eight, realizing our shared vision, indicating maybe a, a partnership amongst the county residents as opposed to um, you know, our, county, our, our future, but I'm fine with either one. I just, 
Um, thought I'd throw that out, but I can see it only received one vote. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm fine with, uh, with the, uh, any of the highlighted ones. Well, that's, that's an interesting point. You know, one idea would be to put that word here, potentially. You could say our county, our shared future. Oh, I like um, that. I like that. Yeah, that's good. That's what I was going to say. Would it be too long if it was our shared county, our shared future? That's too much. I think it's just our county, our shared future, not our shared county or anything, just our county, our shared future. And then what, the JCC 2021 comp plan is like in small letters as a sub? Exactly. Um, so, yep. so it's a little more clear what the actual document is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Is it the 2021 comp plan or is it the 2045 comp plan? <laughs> we can, we get to make that choice. So, um, you know, your current one is, um, uh, 2035 is, I believe, part of the name. So I think, you know, definitely, I think it can be helpful to use the kind of the, the planning horizon date to be clear about the fact that this is a long range planning effort. Uh, some communities do use the date that it was actually adopted. Um, that will, I imagine, be on the cover of the plan. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in the name as well. Um, do you like the idea of having it be that future date? It, it matches future. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't sound like we're going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> I like six just the way it is. I, th I think the shared future was a good addition and I lean towards 2045 myself, but I'll go with whatever everybody else wants to do. I, I agree with Jack. I agree. I, agree. I think that 2045 it goes along with the branding we've been doing for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. You were right about that. Well, it sounds hey, like we have a winner. We don't need a motion for this, do we? Or I don't think so. Um, yeah. Ellen, tell me if I'm incorrect about that, but I, I think we've got some good consensus on this so we can move forward with that. No, no strong objections to number six. Great. Let's, let's take that, Leanne. Thanks. That's great work. Great. Well, thank you all for giving the great ideas. Right. Um, moving on, uh, land use chapter materials, future land use map components. Mr. Weisong, Mr. Leininger, Ms. Haynes. Yes, sir. Good afternoon to the working group. Uh, this meeting will be a continuation of the review of certain components of the land use section materials. The focus of tonight will be the revisions to the land use designation description and development standards which are based on the consensus and guidance given by the working group at the April 19th land use meeting. And tonight's meeting is planned to be the final detailed review of the materials for this chapter. So as such, staff is seeking to receive working group's consensus on these revisions. And I'm also gonna give a, a very brief summary of the proposed changes to the future land use map, which is detailed in the land use cover memo. So the first topic is the revisions to the DDDS and staff has made several changes per the direction of the working group. In the beginning of the document, staff has added a paragraph explaining the difference between the land use designations and the zoning, which should help the reader better understand those distinctions as they proceed through the text. For the economic opportunity designations, language has been added specifying that development in these areas are to be of a design scale and intensity that is complementary to the adjacent respective mixed use area. For community character conservation and open space and recreation, an additional sentence has been included specifying that rural character inside and outside the PSA is to be protected through this designation. The federal, state, or county land eastern state hospital general description has been removed and incorporated into the mixed use eastern state designation. And for mixed use, there have been several changes to the specific mixed use sub areas. For context, uh, staff has provided in the packet a basic comparison of the proposed mixed use level one and level two designation language to the current mixed use zoning district. And the following revisions have been proposed for the individual sub areas within the mixed use. So for mixed use Tuano, language has been included recommending appropriate development types and buffering for the easternmost portion of this designation. For mixed use Croker, language referencing the historical parcels which are the ones that you all had recommended be designated for community character conservation 
and open space or recreation, which is a bit of a mouthful, sorry about that. Um, that language has been removed, and instead language recommending buffering those parcels has been added. For mixed-use light foot, language referencing the suitability of the light foot corridor for the development of workforce housing has been included. The language recommending office uses for the land west of the Colonial Heritage entrance has been removed to allow for possible redevelopment of these parcels for affordable housing. And this is in the location as discussed during the land use application consideration for this area. For mixed use Newtown, language has been added recommending that environmentally sensitive features be protected and permanently preserved where possible. Uh, language has also been added specifying that should the Eastern State parcel west of 199 be included in this designation, no development or vehicular access is recommended. And for mixed use Eastern State, which is the last sub area, of mixed use, the draft language was expanded to state that the preservation and protection of the environment and the protection and enhancement of the transportation network are the two guiding principles for redevelopment of this site. And a new sentence was included recommending that the portion of this parcel west of Route 199 be permanently conserved as open space. And the reason that's in mixed use Newtown and in mixed use Eastern State is in case when should development go through there, we just want to make sure it's covered in both places so that it's clear regardless of the designation, that's the expectation from the county. So that's the DDD, the DDDS, excuse me. Uh, the other item is the future land use map. And this is just a brief summary of what will be shown on the land use map because of the update approval. I don't think any of this will be a surprise to you all because much of it is what you all have discussed through your meetings. Uh, the basic building blocks of the map, such as the land use designation unchanged by this update, the location of community character corridors, uh, the location of public facilities, that's all going to remain the same. Uh, the proposed change of note to the map include the changing of the land use designations for the applications that are approved, the removal of the proposed Moortown Road Extended, and the depiction of the Military Influence Overlay District. And of course, there will be some other housekeeping items, such as the title of the plan, which it seems like we just figured out, which is great, uh, the adoption date, and things like that will also be updated. So those are the two topics for the evening. And I figured that before we open discussion of the changes in the actual land use text, it might be good just to check in on that summary on the land use map to see if the working group had any questions. Uh, so I'll just stop there and see if anyone had any questions on the changes to the actual map before we get into the descriptions themselves. Anybody? Going once? Nice job, uh, t Thomas. Um, should we move on? Certainly. Yes. Yeah, so you don't, you don't we'll, need a you don't need a resolution yeah. for this. Nope. Nope. Um, glad to hear there's no questions, and uh, yeah. just wanted to check and see if there's any. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Rich. I, I beg your pardon, Rich. Rich has his hand up, and I blew it again. I beg your pardon. <laughs> And then Barbara. Rich first, and then Barbara. Rich, are you muted? Oh, yeah. Um, I left it up from last go around. My apologies. OK. Uh, Barbara? I just had a question. Can you move up a little bit on your picture there? Up? Uh, no, no, the other way. I'm sorry, down. <laughs> I have a question. Just a, I don't know what I'm talking about here. The one that says the mapped. The relabeling of Route 60 to Green Mount Parkway extension, what is that and where is that? I think that's a, a good question. I don't know if we've got Tom <laughs> on the call, but uh, Tom, if you wanted to weigh in on the, the name change and the location of that, that'd be great. Yeah. Isn't that the Skiffs Road connector? So on the Current 2035 um, 90s map, it shows the, the Green Mount Parkway as the Route 60 relocate, relocation. Uh, that is actually being renamed to Green Mount Park uh, extension rather than Route 60 relocation. Uh, Thank you. I don't know if there's a visual, but it's just renaming a proposed project. Okay. 
I still don't and understand where, where you're talking. It is. Where, where is it specifically on Route 60 or is it not on Route 60? It's, it's in the very southern part of the county, uh, Barbara and yep. Grove. Oh, okay. By the Walmart distribution. Okay, okay. Ms. I didn't know where it was and I was really confused. Okay. Okay, so it's down southern part of the county. Okay. Tim? Um, oh, this is actually... Paul, I just wanted to add into that before we left it. Yep, yeah, Ms. Mel, this is all the way down near the Newport News line. I think staff's recommending this change as well. It got very confusing a couple years ago when we were doing the Pocahontas Trail Corridor Study Project. You know, the name Poca Pocahontas Trail Relocation can be very confusing, and folks who were interpreting that to mean a literal relocation and rebuilding of Pocahontas Trail to go from this area all the way back up to fire station two. And I, I don't know if that was ever a literal description of the plan at the time, but it's, it's, I don't think it was. And it's certainly not anything that staff is proposing or pursuing at this point. And so Mr. Polster, to your point, Skips Creek connector, that was sort of an informal name since it aligns with Greenmount Parkway, that'll be named Greenmount Parkway as well. And then the extension of that to the south, to the new developable areas, would be the extension piece, just so it, the one road all has one name now, and hopefully we'll avoid any confusion in the, in the, in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Tim? Um, I just, since we're talking future land map and all this other fun stuff, um, I, I didn't catch it prior to the meeting, but Ellen sent us an email this afternoon that the board ha would like to talk about the Moortown Road extension, rural lands policy, EO opportunity designation, and two potential future land use map items, uh, parcels adjacent to colonial heritage, and an item that was not a land use application, which is to look at contracting the PSA on the eastern side of I-64 at the Croker Interchange. Um, I mean, is that something we should be talking about now or is that yeah. something that we should wait until May 25th? We're gonna, um, th that is gonna be tonight, but at, at the end, it's uh, under item eight on your agenda. Okay. I, I'm, so I, just I hold it. You're, 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 you're spot on, but just hold that thought for another hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, anything else on land use chapter materials? Any questions? Frank? You're muted, Frank. Tom, you're going to talk about the descriptions. We're going to still do that, right? Well, yeah, that was going to be the, uh, I think we might be there now where um, okay. I basically gave the overview of what we've changed, the revisions. And I think that uh, you and Mr. Haldeman had both sent in some emails. So I think uh, if we've moved there, this would be the chance for you all to ask any questions of us or have any discussions. And we're definitely looking for feedback on the revisions um, that have been proposed, certainly. Uh, Tim, you still have your hand up, or is that from before? Or no, I just I figure I'll just keep it up the whole time, Jack. <laughs> if you do that, you're going to keep getting called on. Just so you know. <laughs> um, I I got a pretty good answer to my questions from uh, uh, from Tom this morning, so I'm. Satisfied. Frank? Uh, yeah, I had two things, that, and I had uh, submitted the one uh, for the last meeting, uh, Tom, and it was the <clears throat> language about the mixed use and the descriptions that I thought that you mischaracterized that survey. And I gave you the language that I thought you probably ought to use. Are you still considering that, or what are you doing? Would you mind expanding on it, expanding on it a little bit, unless, uh, unless yeah, Ellen I or it in, in, in Jack's email back to you in red, and and it was that 
the implication was that the two of the uh, forms were uh, the, the highest, when in fact, uh, nobody voted for any of them. There wasn't a majority for it. So you had four views, you picked two, but the citizens said no to all four. There wasn't any consensus at all about the five story buildings, but the language refers to that. Like I said, I oh, submitted I it the last time and I repeated it again in Jack's uh, uh, memo. So you're talking about the, the design, the expectations for the level one and the level two within the uh, mixed use designations, is that right? No, this, trying was, to, a, this, this was in the chapter it. piece where you're talking about the design results from the surveys for the different areas. And this specifically was on the mixed use level two description of the survey of picking the, there were four, four views and the description in there said that the top two were this, when in fact, the wording out of the study itself said that there was no positive selection for any of those four. Mr. Poster, this is regarding the character design guidelines language, right. I believe. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we can we can go back and, and look at that language to make sure it's accurately uh, and clearly uh, conveying the results. And the point of this was between the design guidelines, the character guidelines, and what you have in the chapter, they ought to sync up with each other. So anyhow, the second point is, is that I had, Tom, uh, was to revisit again the uh, Pocahontas Trail uh, 199 intersection was 143 and uh, 40. And my suggestion was, is it just like the um, Williamsburg crossing that the designation for that should be small town and suburban center. And I gave you the rationale for that. Yep. Yep. That's uh, that's certainly ringing a bell. I think the, um, that wasn't changed at this point just because we wanted to that's enough of a policy change where i think we're looking for the whole working group certainly to weigh in on that um but as a, i guess as a refresher it would be that you're trying to change the uda type for that designation so that it would switch from being the level two applying to the level one applying is that correct that's correct and it would okay. be the same as the Wavesburg crossing or the norge As, as, as Thomas just mentioned, I think, uh, you know, that's something potentially that could be done within the document. And I think we would look to the working group um, for discussion and, and uh, probably would, would hope uh, to have a straw vote on that item. Is everybody familiar with the area we're talking about? It, it, when you come out of the city of Williamsburg and you're going down Route 60 Pocahontas Trail, and you go by the hospital, it's all of that property on the right-hand side if you're going down towards Kingsmill and going to the 199 interchange. And if you've ever driven there, I mean, putting five or six story buildings along that line, which is the entryway into the city, I don't see that there's any way you can buffer it at all. And, and what's more is the other mixed use area we're talking about is the Bush Garden office complex, which is on the other side. And I certainly would think that keeping that in the same kind of uh, look for the surrounding for what area it is, makes more sense than making it more vertical uh, for it. Um, anyhow, I think the population that came out of that thing for the interim model was something like uh, another 350 or something of that sort. Anyhow, that's that's my pitch. Frank, Frank, make a make a specific proposal. What exactly are you asking for? My proposal is that the UDA designation on Route 11 on on four number 11 UDA Route 60 143 199 interchange that it be changed from medium town or suburban center to small town or suburban center like the Williamsburg Crossing UDA designation number nine. Yeah, I support that. Uh, does anybody uh, else want to 
Cook, any questions or discussion on that? I support that, Barbara. Do you want me to raise my hand? <laughs> 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 now that makes that makes sense. I think this is right. Go, go ahead, Tim. Uh, Julia, I agree. Tim, uh, I guess I'm the only one that disagrees, which is just kind of normal. I mean, we have a four or five story building in the hospital. We've got, as you drive back there, you have four or five story buildings um, with the um, the apartment complexes back there um, behind behind the hospital be between um, the Harris Teeter and, and the hospital itself. Um, it's the entrance to Williamsburg. I don't know why we care about the entrance to Williamsburg in particular. You're sitting there looking at a scraggly, poorly buffered railroad track. So it's, um, you know, I, I, I don't feel like, I don't feel like York County and, and the city of Williamsburg have, have taken into consideration, um, you know, necessarily the, the impacts on James City County and developing that corridor. So, uh, again, if there's a place to create, in my opinion, more verticality, there's there's less impact environmentally because there's less land disturbed. And you're right there adjacent to the 64 um, corridor um, just by jumping on, on 199. So, uh, again, you know, if there's ever a place to to put these higher densities, if if it's not between Croker and Lightfoot adjacent to 64, and if it's not here, then then where? Uh, you know, we we keep hearing we don't want to be a suburban community, but every time we take these higher density areas and these higher mixed use areas where we could conceivably make some sort of um, complete community, uh, it keeps getting knocked down. So we're going to be nothing but a commuter commu community, the, the less dense we make it. So um, it's just, just sort of my, my sentiments at this point. Okay. Frank, is your hand up new or is it continued? Nope. Okay. Frank, um, no, nothing else. Thank you. Um, I um, support Frank's for a couple of reasons. Um, the the uh, higher, taller buildings that Tim referred to are in Williamsburg, of course, and they're off the highway. They're not visible. Well, the hospital's visible, but it sits back from the from the from the uh, from Richmond Road. But more than anything else, it's just the number of people that would be generated by a. Um, the medium density as opposed to the lower density. Um, more more cars, more school kids, more that kind of thing. So um, it, you, you, anything that is built there is certainly going to um, become a, a, a com commuter magnet. Um, Jenny and I um, were on the Workforce Housing Task Force with the uh, with a representative from the developer of the apartments behind the hospital there on Quarter Path, and he, he said they, from the time they started building them, they actively advertised throughout York County and Newport News, and uh, they knew with the wider widening of I-64 that that this would be a great um, success, and they were right. Um, so anyway, I'm, I I support um, Frank's motion, but but Jack, were they? This is just a curiosity question. Were they soliciting York and Newport News? So people who work in in the James City, Williamsburg, James City County area could live closer. So you were meeting the the one of the goals of the task force, or were they soliciting those people to go drive back to Newport News to work? Well, this was started before the task force, and again, it is in Williamsburg. But the the impression I got from the, the gentleman, his first name is Stephen, I forget his last name. Um, he works for Hunt and um, was the, the developer of the apartments and the and the condos. Um, that they were trying to attract people who now live in Newport News. It's unclear where they work, um, but. It, he, 
the the um, some of them could work in uh, James City County, and now they're closer, and that that would be nice. Some of them would continue to work in Newport News, uh, enjoy all the amenities of James City County, and have a fairly easy commute to their to their work because the building was, as you pointed out, right on the entrance to I-64, pretty pretty slick and easy commute. So, uh, so there's probably a little bit of both. We don't know. I don't know anyways. Uh, Rich? Hi, um, I, I'll tell you, it, it, if you recall from the land use applications, you know, I was harping on the, the theme of, well, we've, we've said we want to increase density inside the PSA and there's some trade-offs. And I, I said that on a number of times, but I'm still having a, a tough time grappling with this, uh, this concept of, of adding density and height um, in, inside the PA, PSA in certain areas. And, and one of the reasons I'm, I'm uh, leaning towards Jack and, and Frank's comments is that there's already some uh, density and some height down, as you pointed out, um, uh, around the, the hospital there. And I'm just concerned that if we add more, um, we're going to reach a tipping point. And I'm trying to be... I'm not articulating this well, but I'm trying to be sensitive to, to keeping a lot of the, the values that, that the James City County residents want. Um, and, and we are trying to regulate growth to some degree. And I'm just concerned in this particular section that, that uh, making it a level two mixed use, uh, cumulatively adding on to the already uh, existing higher structures and so on is going is going to give a look and a um, uh, an intensity in that area that that maybe wouldn't wouldn't be beneficial. So, um, like I said, I'm not articulating it, and I'm and I'm really grappling with some of the, some of this issue of of if we want to force growth into the PSA, there has to be a trade off. But I'm I am concerned that that. Um, it's going to be in this particular location, maybe a little too much to make it a level two and a level one might be more appropriate. Okay, thank you. So Anybody else? I would, uh, it's Tim, I, I would suggest, um, it, you know, I, 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 sor I sort of chuckle because I had suggested in some of our other other areas that we allow far higher buildings to uh, to be located there um, when we are talking about some of our mixed use and EO places, so it can be set back further from the road, and, and nobody seemed to like that idea, but yet it was a perfectly suitable comment for for this area. Um, but I would then suggest if if we don't want the density here, then we need to strike that a light rail station would be encouraged in this area, because why would you put light rail in, in a lower density area, a station? Um, you know, if, if the goal is to, you know, encourage public transportation and light rail, which was part of the conversation about the original EO over um, at the Hunt property, um, then, why why would we encourage it where we're not going to put density so um you know if you're if you're going to strike the density then strike the light rail station frank yeah i mean you know the level one doesn't mean that we're not going to have mixed use but it does say we're going to do multi-family residential and we're going to put a cap of two to three stories in with the office two to three it also says we can do retail and service. But if you think about what, what is going on for office in the Kingsmill office area, which is just on the other side of the interchange, you could have that same kind of development. And having a light rail, and, a, and especially where the water line goes right through there, to bring people up from different areas still makes sense. Thank you. Uh, but you lose, else? but you lose affordability at at three or four stories. You know, it doesn't make economic sense for, you know. Uh, I mean, we saw it with the application at Oakland Point. You know, um, you know, if we're really serious about um, affordable units in in James City County. You know, you get more affordability from verticality. So 
uh, again, if we want James City County to be what it is today, which is four and five hundred thousand dollar homes, um, single family homes, and three hundred thousand dollar attached units, and um, then let's just keep going the way we are. But if we want to increase affordability, then we, we got to consider some of these some of these other options. Anybody else? Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Rob, are you there? Yeah, but what are we voting on? Probably. Yeah, could you, Frank? Frank, Frank, go this way. Frank, go ahead and repeat your. Uh, <laughs> Trying to figure awesome. out what to vote for. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Let me get it up here. It is on uh, the number 11 on the description here, Route 60, 143, 199 interchange, yeah. UDA, right. medium town or suburban, which it is now, change it to small town or suburban center like Williamsburg Crossing. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I think oh. I. I'm sorry. I. This is Jenny. I'm. I'm debate. Okay. I'm having. None of this is very easy. Um, no, but not. I'm going to vote aye. Okay, that's four. Barbara. Nay. nay. Okay. Uh, Ron. Uh, Rob. Nay. Two nays, and Tim is a nay. I assume so. It's and Julie's a nay. What did you say, Julie? No. Okay, so it's a four to four. Uh, I guess that means we leave it the way it is. Correct? I think you're right, Jack. Well, actually, yeah. no, because the way it is, is a change, right? UDA medium town or suburban center is a change from the way it is in the, in the present comprehensive plan. And well, we don't uh, have, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead, Ellen. It had not. The, the reason why that's in gray and strike through is is uh, the UDA designation had not previously been in the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, changing it from one thing to another. Um, as far as what was in the comprehensive plan, it's it's just additional information, but mm -hmm. but it hasn't changed. Okay, I'm still trying to figure out what a tied vote means for this. <laughs> Um, do we, does that mean we leave out the gray area or does that entirely or um, since it didn't pass or this was the original proposal and we did, we failed to strike it. So we leave it in. I'm, my, look, look, perhaps we should say, this is Julie, why don't we vote on leaving number 11 as it is now presented to us? Okay, see if that's anybody, a good idea, Julie, thank you. Just in case we don't split evenly on that one. Okay, um, okay, we'll, we'll have a motion uh, to leave it the way it is presented to us. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, that's Aye. two. Re Julie well, and I'm Rich. I'm just reviewing again. Uh, okay, the, the vote is to leave it the way it is presented, UDA, medium town or suburban Got center. It. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's four. Um, Barbara, all opposed. Barbara Nay. Barbara Nay, okay. Jack Nay, Frank I assume is Nay. Nay. Who, who are we missing here? Oh, Julie. Julie's aye. Okay, so that's five to three to leave it the way it is. Okay. If my counting is correct. Okay. Uh, keep it going. Um, if I can add, this might be an interesting sidebar at the work session um, with the board and, and meant to mention that uh, in this was this was what, uh, one thing we grappled with and um, for the reasons outlined, but it might be interesting to get their reaction too. Okay. 
I, I lost you there, Rich. I'm sorry. Say that again. Oh, I'm just uh, I'm just saying if we're at some point, if we're highlighting to the board, you know, presenting the document, you know, we perhaps there's there's some sections where we could say the the group struggled with this concept or had to had to take several votes on this idea um, of the the UDA description. But mm -hmm. uh, I guess we don't want to get down into that that far into the weeds. So um, I'll, I'll, re I'll retract that comment. Well, we we did that with the Moortown Road extension you right. know, last week. You were you were I missed that. Yeah, you know. yeah. We we kind of came to the same rough solution. Okay. Um, but you're right. I mean, we're, we're going to have more discussions on this when we print the final copy. So we can sure. go right in there. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Um, Frank. I was going to say that I agreed with uh, Rich uh, simply because of a comment uh, that uh, I heard in the last board meeting when we talked, when the, when you all talked to him, and specifically it came from uh, John McLennan about densities, and this is his district, and so I think it's appropriate because that is a change in terms of these mixed use levels and the densities. Well, the the, the board has had an opportunity to, to review these materials, um, including um, what you see on your screen as far as the different designations. And, um, you know, fortunately, we did have the opportunity to brief them in April about the, the changes to the different levels. And um, we, we look forward to hearing from the board uh, what items uh, they would like to discuss and certainly um, getting back to that at the end of the meeting, uh, the ones that have already been flagged. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Um, let's move on to uh, implementation chapter materials. Um, Ms. King. Thank you. I'm gonna pull my screen up again. Bear with me. All right, so everyone should have had in their packet um, a couple of different materials related to this chapter, um, both the, um, the implementation chapter and then a series of four um, PDFs that I'll talk about here in just a moment. Um, so this is the first time that the Planning Commission Working Group is looking at the implementation chapter. So I'll just provide a quick overview of what's included in the intention of this chapter. And then we can talk um, a little bit more at length about the prioritization of the actions that will be included in this chapter. So um, this is really, you know, an important chapter because it pulls together, all, all, you know, all the great work that you all have been doing over the last several months and putting together the updated um, GSAs, particularly focusing on the actions piece and um, how that will feed into the update to the county's strategic plan. So the implementation chapter starts off with that discussion about the direct relationship between the comprehensive plan and the strategic plan and the, that the intention is that the comp plan will identify um, a series of actions uh, through the GSAs that will be looked at and um, uh, prioritized through the strategic plan update process. Um, this chapter also um, will include all of the actions organized in a slightly different way, looking at the different types of implementation approaches or action types um, that the various actions fall within. And we have five different um, categories that actions might be organized under. Uh, regulatory and guideline updates, capital investments and funding programs, further planning efforts and initiatives, partnership opportunities, and guidance for development approvals and enforcement. So we, we're using an implementation um, action matrix approach and organizing by each of the um, plan chapters and each of these five action types, all of the actions that are included in the previous policy chapters within the plan. The matrix matrices also include um, related public input priorities. So you can look at a specific action and see which of the five input priorities um, that particular action helps to um, implement. 
Um, and there's also a prioritization section. So just a, a quick note on this, um, the comprehensive plan as we've um, been discussing can give a nod to actions that should be prioritized within the strategic plan. Um, and by prioritization, the strategic plan has three general buckets uh, of timeframes for implementation, um, essentially kind of a short, medium, long-term approach. And the, uh, the idea here is that the comprehensive plan would provide some guidance with respect to specific actions that should be included as short-term priorities within the strategic plan once it's updated. Um, with an understanding that that strategic planning process is really a more focused and in-depth look at um, county capacities, county revenue sources, um, the cost of various actions, um, looking more specifically at which um, entities would be responsible for implementation, et cetera. So the comp plan, um, you know, again, the intention here is that it would uh, essentially provide some direction about the actions that should be considered for short-term designation in the strategic plan, but it's it's not necessarily a mandate because that uh, strategic planning process is going to look at a lot more detail um, for each of these actions. Um, and then finally, we have placeholder tables included in here that identify the actions, again, the related public input priorities, and um, we've got a placeholder here for the prioritization. Um, there's a final section, I won't go through all of the um, placeholder tables at this point, um, there's a final section of this document that also has um, some summary information about amending and updating the plan over time. So, um, before we go and take a look at the prioritization exercise results, does anyone have, excuse me, any um, questions or um, comments about the, sorry, I got off the wrong page there, um, about the implementation chapter text? Uh, Leanne, this is Jenny. Um, at the top of the second page, you talk about the 2035 plan. Did you mean, or maybe it's the third page? Um, yeah, the county's 2035 strategic. Do you mean 2045? So this is in reference to the currently adopted strategic plan, which is called the um, 2035 strategic plan. That will be updated. Um, at some point in the future. So, but the currently adopted strategic plan is called the 2035 strategic plan. It's a little confusing because that's also the same date in the comprehensive, uh, currently adopted comprehensive plans name, but that's actually a different plan being referenced here. Okay. It, mm. So, so maybe what we're, because the comprehensive plan is moving forward before the update, the way this was drafted was to reference the fact that there is an established strategic plan and essentially how it functions today. There is language um, here in talking about the linkage to the strategic plan, plan that talks about the specific steps that need to be taken to implement the comp plan. And those include that update to that currently adopted strategic plan. Yeah, you, you might wanna just take a, another look at that third page language just to see if you can reemphasize, you know, the, the timing aspects of it. Maybe I'm the only one that tripped over it. Um, okay. No, but I think that's important that you note that. It's, it can get a little confusing. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Any other reactions? I'm sorry, I did have my hand up. This is I'm sorry, I, I was muted and I was trying to tell you to, uh, okay. to unmute yourself. Um, yes. Uh, Leanne, uh, the note that I got from uh, Ellen this morning took care of some of the questions and concerns I had and in, in, in what I sent to you all in terms of the staff's interplay, and that's really the next step. But, you know, we're going to uh, get to kind of a so what here uh, after, you know, you go through the prioritization piece, which I'm assuming that those priorities will show up in the placeholders that you have here. Is, is right. that correct? 
<laughs> right. Right. And and so as I've looked at the way everybody's voted so far, at least the ones that did, uh, I think whether they knew it or not, they were making some judgments about the original survey and the gap analysis that was taken. And as a matter of fact, I've always thought that the gap analysis of affordable housing, uh, roads and highways, attracting businesses, preparing rural character and protecting the environment matched up with the goals of the comp plan that we've gone through. And so if you're reading this chapter at the beginning, what is the so what that crosses from the front of this thing to the listing of the priorities? In other words, is there any inferences that you're going to make that these priorities are meant to reduce those gaps where the citizens were thought it was an important issue, which I think they're gonna think that these GSAs that we're gonna prioritize are important and what we think are, and that in fact, some way that they're going to reduce that. And so the, the, the reason that I'm, I'm kind of harping on this is that in the October time when we met with the board, one of the comments that came from one of the board members were about the breadth of, of what folks wanted to do, especially on the gap analysis and whether you could afford it or not. And in fact, what that strategic plan does, as you well know, ties those aspirations to the budget. And so we're gonna have some priorities here. And if these are the things that the citizens wanted to hear about, those gaps reduced, how do we tell them so that they get a so what when they read this implementation chapter? Really good point. And I think, um, so part of the intention of connecting there, and it's not specifically discussed in terms of the gap analysis, but it, there is this section that relates to the public input priorities, which were directly developed from um, the guidance or the findings from the citizen survey and also the round one public input that we received. So we looked at both of those kind of buckets of inputs to create the public input priorities. So I think to your point, if you, if you think it would be helpful to have some more specific language in the document that, or in the chapter that talks about how the satisfaction gaps are being addressed specifically by the short-term priorities that the comprehensive plan sets out, um, we could add some of that language. I believe you had a similar comment for the introduction section that we had a placeholder in the introduction chapter that talked that basically gave an opportunity for um, listing what the um, priority actions were in the plan. I believe it came after the goals listing. Um, so those those could be kind of bookends to the plan, so to speak, um, in terms of con make, connecting the dots between those satisfaction gaps and the action priorities um, that were are being held up in the plan, if you think that that would be helpful. Well, my last point is, and I think it would, but my last point is, is that, and I, I wrote this all to you also, is that when you look across those four matrices, there are actions that people have prioritized that are supportive of each other in different chapters mm -hmm. in different categories. Mm -hmm. And when you look at what you're going to do for housing, what you're going to look, what you say you want to do for the environment sections on flooding, et cetera, and sea level rise, all those things are going to cost some money. And so the relative priority that you end up with of those four matrices of GSAs that are supportive of each other of a theme are going to require money. And one of the things that came out of this, should come out of this, is that the board should get some notion of what the overall priorities are so that when the staff gets a chance to take a look at it, they may find themselves, for example, like we did with the last strategic plan is increasing the tax by 7.1. So if you want to deal with some of the complexities of those issues, whether they're housing, 
whether they're the open space, whether they're the environmental issues, it may in fact cause a tax increase. And the priorities of those should be reflective across those matrices when they're grouped together. And when you do that, you're going to see specifically how you will reduce the gaps in at least three of these areas. Thank you. Jenny, you're, you're up. Uh, thank you. Um, I just want to say I think I completely agree with Frank. I think that's a great idea. And, and wearing my CPT hat, um, it, I think it's always great to be able to say, and, and even in an executive summary, this is what we heard from you. And this is how we've taken that input and responded to it. And to lay out, you know, from a, a, a kind of a 30,000 foot level. Yes, there was this uh, survey in the citizen survey. It referenced, it, it revealed these gaps in satisfaction. We, we did the following other rounds of community engagement. All those ideas were reinforced. And then we asked you how much money you'd be willing to, or how many resources you'd be willing to spend on something if you had a, if you had a limited thing. And this is how it all fits together. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's a, a really great idea, Frank. And it sounded like, Frank, you thought it might be good to have that maybe before we even talk about the linkage to the strategic plan, really um, maybe under the introduction, there could be a subheader that talks about kind of pulling all of this together um, through implementation and creating that connection between where we started with the satisfaction gaps being identified and then ending on the prioritization of actions and the other actions that have been identified. Yeah, I think, I think that, that would be right. a great idea. Okay. I think where this will really make sense, Leanne, is, is after we go through and everybody does their prioritization thing and you start seeing how they link across the chapters against these satisfaction gaps, it'll be easy. And so you may have another, another chart besides showing here's what, they, here's what each of them were for the four or five things, but here's how they connect together. Because okay. each of the chapters are supportive of some of these things. Mm -hmm. Yep. Are there Thank any you. other? Sorry, I can't see the list of folks here. Does anybody else have their hand up? No, no nobody else does. Anybody? One more comment on the implementation chapter. Oh, there we go. Seeing none, do um, you want to? discuss the four or five uh, priorities? Yes, yes. So just to kind of make this a little bit um, easier, what we've, what we've done, and um, thank you, Mr. Holster, for sharing that um, um, spreadsheet earlier with the working group. We've got a similar type um, organization here. So before I dive into the results of the prioritization exercise, I did want to just um, mention again, in case there was any confusion, we do have five different um, action types that we are organizing the actions within. There are only four that we're asking to be um, prioritized. And that's because this fifth one, the guidance for development approvals and enforcement is, is really envisioned to be ongoing policy actions, if you will. So to, that's to say those are actions that are intended to guide day-to-day decision-making, particularly on development approvals and enforcement. So it's if there are not specific initiatives or projects included within that, it's more um, kind of policy guidance uh, related actions. So that's why we um, have not asked that you prioritize those. So, um, Thank you all for looking through all of these actions um, in a slightly different organization. Um, hopefully that was kind of a useful um, exercise to look at these. And what we've done is to take the various votes that you all provided for your top five and plug them in for each of the different action type um, groupings. 
and we have those listed here. Um, so I've got um, a box um, drawn around the actions. This is the partnership opportunities um, grouping and the actions listed here. We have eight that received um, more than one vote from a planning commission working group member in terms of prioritizing them as, as a short term um, action to be included in the strategic plan. Um, we also received um, several other um, suggested priorities from members um, that were kind of, you know, shared by one, but not um, multiple. So, and, and we, this is how we have this spreadsheet set up for the other three um, buckets. So I can kind of walk through each of these and then we can have, maybe have a discussion about um, how we move forward um, from here. Um, so uh, as um, Frank was mentioning, there's, there are multiple chapters that are represented in most of these um, prioritized actions. Um, and you can see bolded here the, the kind of key topics. I know it's a lot of words to read on the screen, but try to bold the, the critical um, pieces to each of these actions here so that you could get um, a quick view of, of the ones that were prioritized. Um, so the, the one that received the most votes from this grouping is uh, of support for a housing action to support nonprofit groups um, that provide various um, housing assistance within the community. Uh, the next one was a community character action, uh, focusing on identif identifying roads that should be preserved, um, working with VDOT and finding ways to maintain rural character and also um, an acceptable level of safety. Another housing action focused on adaptive reuse and repurposing of old vacant and or underutilized commercial buildings. And this is one of those that um, has, uh, it's a multi-part action and you'll see as we go through the other buckets that the other parts of this action are included in several other um, action groupings. Uh, a land use action to promote the economic viability of traditional and innovative farming and forestry industries. Uh, transportation action to coordinate the county resiliency plan with VDOT um, focusing on climate change related uh, resiliency issues. Uh, economic development action to coordinate with um, William and Mary and Thomas Nelson Community College on business attraction and expansion. Another ED action to support public private par partnerships to revitalize unique areas such as Tuano and then a public facilities action to encourage the provision and location of preschool programs and classrooms in the county. Um, and again, we have other ones listed here um, in terms of um, other votes that were received from the working group. So I'll jump over to the next one, the regulatory and guideline updates. Um, so you can see in the quick, quick question, box. Leanne. Sure. Yeah, you didn't do a weighting of your scores. You just counted votes. That's correct. We, we asked for the top five. We didn't necessarily ask for a ranking. And so we didn't want to interpret that um, the order that folks um, sent their um, priorities were necessarily a ranked order. It, it appeared that some folks may have done that, but others might have just listed them as they were included in the order they were included in the document we provided. And we didn't specifically ask for, we asked for a top five. We didn't ask for the number one, number two, et cetera. So that's why we counted votes and didn't include ranking here. But if you, if you did, you would have been able to sort out the ties. And I think most of us did wait. Anyhow, that, that's the way I counted it when I looked at the thing. But that, that's the point of, of how do you get rid of the ties? And then how do you get to something that says, you know, here are the five priorities for this area. So did, did everyone um, provide their um, votes in terms of a, a ranked order or was it more and um, just their, your top five and you weren't necessarily prioritizing among those five? Uh, this is Jenny, mine were not ranked. This is Rich, mine were not either. Mine weren't either, this is Julie. I had a hard work. enough time limiting to five. <laughs> this, this is this is Jack, but um, but I'm with Jenny. I I did rank mine, but but boy, I, 
I, it was so hard that, that mm -hmm. you know, I, they, they could may as well be unranked. And I think it, one thing kind of going back to what I was saying before about the relationship with the strategic plan, because this is a very, very hard choice. Um, I do want um, it to be kind of, you know, known that this is not the last crack at this. It's the last crack at, um, or at least the first crack in this process to identify the priorities and within the comprehensive plan. Once the plan is adopted, there's still an opportunity to weigh in in terms of what the short-term priorities are going to be. This is just the, the comp plan's guidance that's being provided at this level. And obviously that's very critical and important, but it's not, um, the last opportunity to weigh in on short-term priorities, I guess is what I'm trying to say. My last comment, Leanne, was is that uh, uh, the one with the uh, VDOT with working with them is I think I had a change in, in one, of the, uh, 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 one of the GSAs that it came out, uh, I guess, for the environment that it really was a resiliency plan. And of course, that resiliency plan shows up in the uh, first matrix you showed that we didn't rank. And, and so if you're going to do a resiliency plan, one of the things you're going to do is take those items that apply to that resiliency plan, like the VDOT one, and there's others all the way through. And you certainly, if you're going to try to do something about that plan, you want to consider those GSAs. To so make sure that your plan covers all of those things. So when you come to protecting the environment, Da, 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 da. That's why you want to put that resiliency plan with those components together. So, just to make sure I'm understanding this correctly, this is this is an, a, a single action within the plan in the transportation chapter, but it's directly related to other actions that focus on development of a resiliency plan. Exactly. Okay, and so it's even though it's not listed as a multi-part action, in effect, it is because it's connected to other actions within the plan. And you will see that for other subjects besides this. It'll um, end up for housing and it'll end up um, for, for one other one that escapes me right now. So, so anyhow, that, that, that's, that's just another way of looking at these matrices across. And it wasn't, a, it's not an accident that, that this GSA ended up that way in, in these chapters. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can touch on that for a moment. I, I, um, do others feel that it would be good to draw out those other related actions to the resiliency plan and elevate those? Because I don't believe those shook out in terms of priorities when we, we can confirm that as we go through the other groupings. But um, I don't think that was the case. And so do other working group members think it would be important to elevate those other ones so that there's consistency and, and um, you're looking at the entire resiliency plan and all of the related um, actions that um, are, are associated with that plan effort? Um, Jenny? Um, actually, I had my hand up for something else, but my answer to that question is, I think, I think we ought to go to try to identify our first crack at the top five first. And in doing that, I was gonna ask Leanne whether you have already identified uh, places where the same action shows up in multiple matrices. So I found myself, for example, picking out a housing thing in a couple of different matrices. Mm -hmm. And I knocked it out of one because I'd covered it someplace else. Because, you know, I was trying to say, okay, what are my top five if I only have to list something one time um, to recognize that an action will be taken? Right. And I wonder whether, have you, as we go through that, have you done that where there are overlaps of things that have shown up? I know or maybe there haven't been. There, there are, um, and I know in particular this one, uh, the this housing yeah. two point three is multi part. Yeah, and so there are, um, and that might, should probably say three point um, 
yeah, it's 2.37, not 4.7. Sorry, that got mislabeled there. Um, the, the, the way we organized these, we broke out the multi parts. If there was like a, a third number in the numbering scheme of the action, right. um, we broke those out based on which of these um, action types they best fit within. So right. they shouldn't have been duplicated. Um, except for at the top level, we do um, to, to make sure that we understand what the top level action is. We include this, for example, support the adoptive reuse, um, yeah. adaptive reuse, et cetera. But then this, the, the bottom level action, we have tried to only include once in a matrix and um, to group it in the place that it makes the most sense. So, you know, and so this is a, an example of a housing action that has partnership opportunities. I believe there's also, I'm just going to jump ahead. There's um, regulatory and guideline right. um, updates included as well. And I think I'm trying to remember, I think it's, is it capital funding? Um, yes. So there's also some, um, uh, funding related um, okay. action items in here as well. And so okay. those are all kind of sorted under the bucket that they, a type of action that they fit within. I, th I think my view would be to try to come to terms on what the top ones would be. And then, and then if we realize that there's a whole bunch of stuff missing that would need to be included to Frank's point that we tackle it after we nail down the top level. Okay, so, okay. So for example, if this, if this resiliency plan one does make kind of the top five, then, then that's something that we could consider going and connecting to the other actions right. or referencing them in some way. Um, that, and that would be an easy thing to do. Um, okay, um, let's see, any other kind of, no other? Okay, I finally got the participants thing up so I can see that now. <laughs> okay, I don't see any hands. So I'll jump over here to the next one and then we can jump back. So in terms of the uh, regulatory and guideline updates, we had um, seven actions that had uh, more than one vote associated with them. And they, again, were a, um, somewhat of a mix, but also kind of lining up to some degree with the public input priorities. So for the environment, we have um, investigating changes to the zoning ordinance, uh, including renaming the A1 General Agricultural District and re-examining lot size and clustering provisions. Uh, for in community character, there uh, was an action for continuing um, the use of, or continuing to improve and protect character of the county through use of the character design guidelines, economic development action, to review and update county regulations, policies, and procedures to make sure that there are kind of clear expectations for developing new businesses and target industries uh, for the environment, exploring ordinance amendments to incorporate recommendations of the Colonial Soil and Water Conservation District, particularly to equine and other animal stocking rates. For housing, we had, um, again, that support the adaptive reuse and repurposing of old, vacant, and underutilized commercial buildings as workforce housing. These, again, focusing on the regulatory and guideline um, subsections or subactions there. And then for land use, exploring the creation of solar and wind energy ordinance, um, developing that. Um, so I'll move on to the, oh, sorry, let me go back. Um, and there were um, several here that looked like they were mostly community character oriented that received um, individual votes from working group members. Um, on the capital investments and funding uh, bucket, we have um, nine that received more than uh, one vote. Uh, for environment, we have uh, preparing the multi-year prioritized list of stormwater related projects and including co cost estimates for design and implementation of those projects uh, for an economic development action to continue to pursue and promote incentives available for new and expanding businesses and industries within certain areas of the county, focusing on some of the economic zones 
and environment action to develop funding and implementation mechanisms for the watershed protection and restoration goals and priorities from the watershed management plans that the county has adopted. Uh, another environment action to continue to develop regional cumulative impact focused hydraulic studies for the county's waterways, particularly those vulnerable to flooding. Uh, parks and recreation action to prioritize potential property acquisition in parks um, and underserved areas of the county. A transportation action to seek funding for regularly updated um, for a regularly updated list of proposed pedestrian and cycle projects to go into the, your CIP. And then a housing action to support, this is again that adaptive reuse and repurposing of old vacant and or underutilized commercial buildings as workforce housing. And we did have um, a few um, individual votes in this as well that were for a couple of different, came from a couple of different chapters. And then final group. Leanne, yes. Leanne could, could you go back, please, just, sure. just for clarification, a question to the capital investing. The, the very first one um, is environment 1.21. If you scroll all the way to the top, I, I think it up. is. Are you at the top? I think I'm at the top. No. Oh. Huh. Um, is it environment? Which environment 1.21. Oh, there it is. Environment yeah. 1.21. That's. That's just for the planning, right? That's not to actually do the work. That's my understanding. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, Ellen, correct me if I'm wrong, but as my read of this is that it's really kind of the um, developing the list and creating the cost estimates for design and implementation. So it, like, you, um, like you said, Mr. Haldeman, I believe that's for the planning aspect okay. of this. I, I, I had that. Uh, but I wasn't real clear on it. And I'm not sure I would have had it on my list if it hadn't included the work. But um, anyway, I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Sure. And then the final prioritized list were the further planning and initiatives um, group of actions. And we actually have five that received um, more than one vote from a planning commission working group member. Um, and these five were to identify, first one was a, an environment um, chapter action to identify the specific existing and potential uses of county streams and rivers and identify standards necessary to support those uses. A second was a land use action to ensure developments are subject to zoning or special use permit review to mitigate impacts um, through several means listed here. A community character action to consider incorporating elements of the character design guidelines into the future land use guidelines in the land use chapter. Um, uh, I believe there's a population uh, action to assess food insecurity for lower income households in the county and examine ways to address um, those issues. And then finally, a parks and rec action to coordinate outdoor recreation, greenway, purchase of development rights, green space, community character and environmental protection programs to maximize um, those shared resources um, and funding. And Ms. Wortman? Can I just suggest that if we put something as a short-term action, it shouldn't start with the word consider doing something. <laughs> I mean, that sounds pretty wishy-washy to me. Good point. Um, so maybe we need to, if we decide that that's something that's gonna be a short-term priority, we ought to rewrite the GSA to be more action-oriented. So, my understanding is that um, just in terms of a kind of procedure and process um, is that these, the GSAs will be moving forward um, as, they're, as they're drafted for uh, the March 25th meeting, if I hope I'm getting that date correctly, but that there might be an opportunity at the June 3rd Planning Commission Working Group meeting to potentially discuss any um, changes that you might want to make to the GSAs. Um, so one of the things that we're trying to honor is that you all have been through a 
a multi, as you all are well aware, a multi-month process to develop the, the policy chapters and, and to provide direction on moving those forward. So this is really kind of working with those established GSAs. Um, so I think we want to, I guess, talk about, you know, if there were to, to be any changes to these particular actions, I think that would be something that we would handle potentially at that June 3rd meeting. Um, that's, that's fine with me. I just, it, it just doesn't seem as though if we, if we say something is important enough to be included in one of these short-term action things that, that, that the wording itself ought to reflect more certainty <laughs> that we think it's important. Frank, do you have your hand up? I did. I just wanted to make the point that on PR uh, 3 1, um, with the green space, this is a perfect example of something that is supportive of the number one on the last sheet for the open space. And you really don't want to decouple that because both there are actions inside of that open space one where you actually have to go and develop a plan. I mean, there's some other things that they need to do. And part of it is this right here. And so that, that's an example of the connection across matrices that we're gonna find. And the housing we've seen already twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you. that housing one I think is in there at three different points. You know, I think, um, so, so I think to some degree, you know, some of this is going to, some of that kind of coordination of what happens first, the sequencing, what gets grouped together. I think that's the role of the strategic planning effort is to sort through, because that's where you're actually defining the, the departmental priorities and, and um, work plans effectively. Um, I, I agree exactly with what you're saying, but if you go back and look at the paper that Vlad put together and you look at the piece portions, this does something about preserving the community character, the preservation and da da da. How it happens someplace else is not the issue that I'm trying to get at, is that there are actually GSAs that shorten that gap. And these two definitely do that. Okay, so you're, you're kind of emphasizing back to the point about the satisfaction gap. Exactly. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, sorry. And I'm so it hits three of them. It hits three of them. Right. Thank you. Um, I have my hand up, so uh, I'll recognize myself. Um, I, I had a real hard time with this project. I mean, there are dozens of GSAs in here that I think are very important that didn't make my list, but there's one that really, really stood out, and it's and it's not on here. And um, it's PF 1.8, which has to do with data security. And um, I'm just thinking about these repetitive ransomware attacks and hacking attacks and and how very, very expensive and disruptive they can be mm -hmm. if you fall victim to them. And um, so I had that as, uh, of all of these things, that's the one that I that really stood out to me. And I'm, and I'm the only one, excuse me. Um, Jeff, this is Julie. I, I've been thinking about the exact same thing. I did not put it on my list, but it was, it was something that I've been thinking about. So I, I also share your concern that if the, if the county falls vulnerable to one of these hacking attacks, we're toast. So I, I, would, I would support your concern there. Rich, Rich. Um, I, I did notice there were a couple places um, going through these matrices where um, it, when I looked at it, similar to your point about the, the height, the, the um, the data breaches and what went through my mind and it may not be incorrect or may not be correct logic, but it was like, well, wait a minute, this should be part of the day-to-day -day work of the county. So we don't really need to highlight this as a priority goal strategy action type item because this is the way we should be doing business anyway. And so from my standpoint, that's why I shied away from um, adding 
a couple items like that to my list is because, uh, again, I, I thought from a, a professional standpoint, that should be part of our day-to-day -day job anyhow. I think the way it's, that's a good point. And I, and I had some of those as well, but I, I think the way this, I don't have the wording in front of me, I should have copied it, but it, it has to do with, you know, providing funding or providing adequate funding mm -hmm. or support mm -hmm. for, or some words to that effect. I wish I had it in front of me, but, um, okay. which, but you're absolutely right. I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that everybody in our, tech department is well aware of this and is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and is working on it. But uh, yeah, and a couple need... other areas. Yeah, that's why I, I tried to um, rightly or wrongly pick items that might need special emphasis or uh, special funding uh, over and above um, the daily operating budget issues. Mm -hmm. but, Good point. Uh, Julie, your hand is still up. Is Yes, and Rich, you have a very good point there. I do think that this is something that the county ought to be considering and probably is considering on a day-to-day -day basis, but this can be ferociously expensive to do a good job on protection. So I'm, I'm waffling on this one. Mm -hmm. Frank? I had kind of the same idea, but on the CIP, even though we've already taken care of, of those projects and, and those were all at the top there in terms of the stormwater piece. But we, we went and got a, a tax increase of which 1.1 penny went to the stormwater to take care of all these issues. And so I know that we still wanna see these things go on as a priority, but I didn't assume that the county would stop using that 1.1 penny to do those things for stormwater. I mean, there's there's like four or five stormwater issues across there. And so I never voted for it just simply because I didn't assume that it was going to go away. It's just like the, the transportation and the roads piece is we're putting a million five aside every year to pay as you go. So I, I never voted for any of those. So the the issue here is which ones are really the priority that aren't funded that need to be done. Okay, thank you. Jack, uh, could I add one other thing? Sure, please. Um, sorry, I, you know, I think from a land use perspective, our, and a comp plan perspective, our jobs not to, as Rich pointed out, I mean, ensuring the the integrity of our, our network falls to our IT department and for them to make requests to do that. And, and I think if, if it's a CIP request, then it comes to us and, and we do that. But I think from a greater comp plan perspective, what we really should be looking at and advocating for is on the high tech side of things and creating um, or fostering a network um, that that wants to attract those those firms who are looking for um, that higher connectivity. You know, when you look at some of the the redevelopment of areas, those communities that are um, investing in infrastructure or are creating. Um, portals to the data links that connect uh, the United States to Europe and those types of things. And where th that's where the, the higher tech and, and the jobs are coming from. So I, I would just say that if we wanted to talk about the technology side, it should be, you know, fostering the infrastructure to, to support that, which makes it attractive to, uh, you know, businesses coming in. Yeah, good point. Good point. Uh, anybody else? Back to you, Leanne. So, uh, you know, a, a couple of, maybe we can talk about just the approach for how we want to do this first. Um, you know, there we have luckily one of the groupings here that actually has a, a five that are, you know, have received more than one vote. So that makes that grouping a little bit easier, but some of these have, uh, more than five, and um, that 
you know, multiple people thought this was an important priority to be moving forward. Um, I don't think there's anything magic about the number five. You know, one alternative would be to identify um, short-term priorities that were um, voted on by more than one planning commission working group member um, as a short-term, as a recommendation for a short-term priority within the strategic plan. Um, we could try to whittle these down, the ones that have more than five, you know, reducing those, but I'm not sure that that's necessary. Um, there's going to be, again, a lot more focused, um, you know, processing of these different um, actions through that strategic planning process. And at least, you know, whittling it down to a smaller number here, I think is helpful, even if it doesn't, it's not a magic number five. Um, so what do you all think about carrying forward with a short-term designation, the actions that received more than one uh, vote from a working group member? I'll take a stab. First off is when it comes to each of the matrices, having a, a one through end listing and how they got scored is fine with me. That, that, that's not so important to me to be able to say here are the top five. But what, you know, the relative priority of all those things within the matrix, that, that to me is kind of important because I think it's going to be part of what the staff, when it gets a hold of this, starts to do something with it. Or when you start to put the strategic plan together for the next one, Leanne, this is going to be your start point with the staff and with that group. What, what I do think is important is that I would like to make sure that the staff gets the idea that no matter how these things got rated, they're related across mm -hmm. the four matrices across chapters. And as long as they can come away and see and let, let uh, Tony Small figure out what the resiliency plan is and what those components should be. And she can go point to all those GSAs that would relate to that bundle. The same thing with the housing and the same thing with the open space. I mean, it, it's going to form the guidance for that staff to do something, but they ought to realize that there are those linkages and they do have some relative priority. Thank you. Uh, I, I'd be curious to hear where staff would like to cut this off. How many of these should be, a, in a, how many can they handle in the short term, in other words? And this is Ellen. Um, I, I think uh, in terms of what gets notated in the document, uh, as, as Leanne has already said, uh, I, I don't think there is a magic to the number five, but uh, just, just having that information that reflects what the working group's input is on what the priorities are and, and having it narrowed down uh, within the, the document is uh, a helpful item. Um, I think as far as what staff resources are, and um, uh, that would be something more so that we, we'd have to look at uh, well, the department heads and administration and many other folks as well as part of the strategic plan. So I think that that part would, could get looked at more in that respect. Jenny? And, and a follow-on question to staff is picking up on the point uh, that was made about, I think Rich made it too, about not marking things as short-term priorities if the thought was that that was already part of the ongoing activities of staff. Are there things that we've marked as priorities that fit that bill? That is, you'd be doing it anyway and there's no need to emphasize it as, as a priority, or even if you're doing it, and the alternative is even if you're doing something now, would marking it as a priority mean that you put more resources toward it? I had, I had trouble with that when I was trying to come up with picks uh, for my list. Related to that, um, this, I, I think I could take a closer look, but this was the one action that that kind of jumped out as me as potentially the, the case that this was something actively being done today. And it's very important, but 
if we are not wanting to include those actions that are part of, you know, the course of work on a daily basis, this might be one of those. Thank you. I agree with that. And I, I just wondered if staff felt that there were others that might fall into that category. Yeah, and Ellen, tell me if I'm wrong about that characterization here. Um, I, I think um, as far as that particular one, um, I, I think it's it's fitting in that guidelines update just because there probably will be some work going forward figuring out you know processes and uh, there might be some updates to policies or I know this was specifically in some of the other actions um, but also sort of looking at our zoning ordinances in relation to those that that new tool that we want to make sure um, we use as best as possible um, so I, I do think it probably would be something we certainly are committed to using those anyway but there is some some new items and new work needed to make sure again that we use that as best as we can um, as far as whether the other ones that are identified here at the top are ones that would be occurring anyway. Um, I, I haven't done that, uh, like a complete analysis. That my sense is many of them are kind of new initiatives or, or um, things that, that uh, could, could be highlighted to show that, that this was a, a new direction. Um, rather than sort of continuing items. But like I said, I haven't done a, a, a analysis specifically in that regard. Thank you. Sure. So, um, let's see, does anybody else? Okay. Uh, are you all, so I guess the, the question is, are you all comfortable with moving forward with these um, top ones and maybe um, you, the project team can take a closer look and make sure that these don't include those um, kind of would have already happened type actions. Um, the, the only one that really jumped out at me is the one I just showed. And it sounds like there's enough you know, reason in terms of the updates uh, that will be happening associated with that, that it's likely worth including as a short-term priority. Um, is there, is, are, are folks comfortable with moving forward with the, the multi-vote actions that have been identified and recommending that those are short-term or do you want to pare them down further? Uh, may I have a, a motion to oh, the- oh, I have my hand up, Jack. Oh, um, sorry, Rich. That's okay. Um, I I was just going to say I I agree with Leanne with that approach, just identifying the ones with the multiple votes. Um, but I was wondering, and this uh, I don't know how much of this is computerized, where you can just run a different data scan. But I was wondering on the um, the 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 five per each category. Is there a possibility to add a, a column that says? Um, sort of indicates how much cross pollination there is by by listing, you know, like if we're in the partnership opportunities and 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 a particular item has a has um, is impacted by housing and parks and rec and so on and so forth to sort of indicate uh, a, an order of magnitude of how many other um, categories of GSAs this particular item um, can be seen in, or does that become just way too cumbersome to try to uh, plod through. So let me and let me make sure I, I understand the question. I think it's a good one. So is the is the idea to have another column in the matrix that would essentially cross reference associated but different yep. actions? Yes. That are okay. Yeah, and this is because Frank's point um, that he's made uh, is really, I think, critical, and and it could give an idea of, of of whether there are certain items that give you more bang for the buck than other items, and and so on. But yes, you summarized it uh, right on, Leanne. That's what I was getting at. So I think I think that's definitely a doable thing. I think it there is a um, it I, I say it's doable. I'm not sure that it's doable within the time frame that we have 
to kind of move forward with this process. So mm. I think that's going to be the challenge because what you would, what you really need to be doing is, uh, well, if we're only doing it for the priorities um, and we're just cross-referencing the priorities, I think that's doable. If we're looking at every single action and all was, the matrices and cross-referencing, that, that's going to be a, a much heavier lift. I was rec- asking about just the, the priorities. Okay. That identified. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, so if we're if we're focusing on the top priorities from each of the four buckets and wanting to kind of identify other priorities that they support and have linkages with, it seems like um, that's potentially um, you know more doable and not really taking us off course in terms of, of the schedule of meetings that we've got coming up and, and this being shared at future meetings. Um, I, I think that's a doable thing. Okay. So Thank it would just it would essentially be an a, another kind of column that is, that cross reference other actions that are associated. Yes. Mm-hmm. Frank. Oh, Leanne, I, I will send you those four sheets uh, that I sent out with an update, and I did that crosswalk so okay. that you can see it, and, and it was for the ones that people voted for. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll send that to you right now. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Uh, um, so Lee and you just did my work for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, would you um, repeat one, one more time, Leanne, what, um, where you would like to head on this? Sure. So with the addition of the new column we just talked about that cross-references other prioritized actions across the diff- four different buckets of action types, um, what we're recommending is that we would carry forward um, the actions that have multiple votes, so more than one vote by a planning commission working group member, that, uh, that those actions be listed as um, short-term priorities within the implementation chapter. Do, do I hear a motion to that effect? This is Julie, so uh, move. Thank you, Julie. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. <coughs> you, I think you have what you need, um, yes. Leanne. Thank you. Um, it is, I think that's it for you, Leanne, is that right? That's it. Okay. Um, on to Ms. Cook for appendices. Yes, thank you. Um, the comprehensive plan has several appendices that are intended to aid readers in their understanding of terms and concepts and to document information related to the chapters. Uh, many of these planned appendices were reviewed as attachments to various chapters or had been reviewed separately and are now referenced in a chapter, such as the public engagement reports referenced in the introduction chapter. A list of these documents is included in the memo, as you can see here. Uh, other planned appendices were included in past comprehensive plans and will be updated to reflect revisions in this version of the plan or to reflect other updated information. Examples include the glossary and the source document list. And again, the, the full list of documents is provided here. Um, staff seeks PCWG concurrence on this approach to, uh, to the appendices, as just discussed, and I'll be glad to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. Any questions? I don't, I can't, I've lost the hands. I don't see any hand. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Um, Rich? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, That was from last go around. Frank? I'm sorry, same thing. Okay. Uh, Any questions of Ellen? Comments? You're getting off easy tonight, Ellen. <laughs> all right. Good Thank job. Good much. job. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, it was. Um, thank you. Uh, you still have the floor. I think we want to uh, begin the discussion uh, subject of your memo this morning. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, 
Yeah, as you all know, uh, we do have the joint work session with the board coming up on Tuesday, May 25th at 1 p.m. Um, this work session does follow on from work sessions in March and April, which were opportunities to provide the board with draft documents so they could begin their reviews. Um, at the April meeting, staff requested that the board let us know of topics they would like to talk about by May 17th, so there is a little time ahead of us on that. But the topics that we know of so far, and I'll, I'll come back to these in just a minute, are Moortown Road Extended, Rural Lands Policy, the Economic Opportunity Designation, and two potential future land use map items. So again, coming back here. Um, for the Rural Lands Policy, uh, I think this is a, a general. A, we don't know of a specific question or concern at the moment, but it's an opportunity to make sure the board has all the information they need on the recommended language in the chapter text the Rural Lands Designation Description, and GSA 6, which is the one that uh, excuse me, focuses on rural lands. Um, for the Economic Opportunity Designation, at the work session, it sounded like there was some general interest in just uh, discussing the purpose and the need for the EO designation. Um, and as the group will recall, the consultant team prepared a briefing paper that considered the EO designation earlier in the process and hopefully an opportunity to share some of that information with the board. Uh, I think they. Uh, it was also raised at the work session, just uh, uh, the relationship between EO and the PSA and having uh, good clarity in the language of the designation on how that would proceed. Um, for the future land use map items, the first one is a land use application the Planning Commission Working Group considered. It's LU 20020. It's uh, parcels adjacent to Colonial Heritage on Richmond Road. Um, and again, just the, I believe the board um, wanting to understand the, the recommendation from the working group and talk about that. Uh, the other item was not a land use application, uh, although the working group did look at a couple of the parcels involved. Um, this would be looking at the land east of the Croker Interchange and potentially considering um, contracting the PSA in that area and that would involve about 15 properties. So um, for that one, you know, as, as just stated, the, the working group hasn't voted on a particular application that encompasses that entire concept. Um, I think uh, it will be a really good opportunity to understand more from the board uh, about each of those items. Um, as we have discussed at past meetings, the focus of the joint meeting would be on the items flagged by the board uh, so we can receive the information so they can receive the information, discuss the topics that are most helpful to them, so they think about the process going forward. Um, there are a number of logistical aspects of the meeting that we're still in the process of working through, but we anticipate it may be helpful for the board to have one or more working group members summarize the working group's recommendations on the items just mentioned. And we'll be further coordinating with Mr. Holdman and the PC work, working group in the coming days to hopefully um, kind of plan out all the, the steps there. So uh, I may not have uh, the answers to, to all questions this evening, uh, but I'm glad to uh, invite you all uh, to ask them, and, and we can certainly follow up after the meeting if I, I don't know now. Thank Ellen, this, this meeting will be in person, I take it. Um, will the entire working group be, be coming? Um, it would be in person, and uh, it would be wonderful to have all of all of the working group members there. Um, similar to October, if there are members who um, would feel most comfortable in a remote setting, um, you know, let us know. We can look into whether that is a, a possibility. And this is uh, May twenty-five at one o'clock. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you, would you like to like to distribute the the assignments now on who who um, who is going to speak on each of these five topics, or is that something you'll work out later, or how do you? Um, and if the working group would like to discuss that, uh, that would be fine. But I'd also equally glad to follow up with you all via email and, and work out some of those logistics that way. Okay. Well, as as Ellen said, there are, there are five subjects that the the board wanted to um, discuss in more more depth. 
Um, you know, I, I, I'd be happy to take one, any one of them, uh, or um, how, however we want to do it. There's the Moore, Moortown Road extension, rural lands policy, economic opportunity designation, and two uh, future land use map items. Um, I guess we could do this, but, oh, Frank? Alan, I, I, I can't believe as busy as you've been that you managed to reply to my email today and you didn't share that in this meeting today on those issues from the board. And so if I can, I'd like to, to follow up with you so that uh, we know where we are. So I'm gonna do the first one is the Croker Road piece. You said there were 15 zones and, and, and I still have a problem is north, south, east and west and east is where the golf course is and the Hankins and the two conservatory. Is that the area that they're concerned with? Um, it's, that is certainly part of it, yes. And, and here again, I, I think, um, you know, staff has a preliminary understanding and, and hope to uh, gain more understanding at, at the work session meeting, but um, it may be that it would be all the land on the east side of 64. Uh, so that would include the, I think it's uh, the way we have it called out in the mixed use uh, description is the southeast quadrant of the Croker Interchange mixed use area. Um, there's also some land, again, on that side of, uh, of Croker that is not within that. It's, it's uh, just on the other side of the road there. It's designated low density residential. And then there's some parcels that are designated neighborhood commercial. So, I think what would help is if you gave us a map, I gave you a map that was north south oriented and there aren't 15 slots within the PSA that are east. And, and so sure. that kind of clarification is needed. Now, my own sensing is that they're talking not about the interchange, but they're talking about the land that we already took out it's on the Croker Road next to the Stone House. And so you may want to ask because Mike brought that up in his comments and he didn't even realize that we'd already voted to take that out. So some definition of what that issue would be appreciated. Uh, number two, I, I don't have any problem about the uh, LU20, I mean, that's straightforward. I, I don't know why they're, you know, they don't want mixed use or it's a trade zone and they don't want it to be a trade zone or, I mean, I, I don't understand what the problem is or what they are concerned with. Now, you need to share with the group, though, uh, McGlennon's uh, notion over the EO. I think that would be very helpful, especially for Tim to understand what this is about so he doesn't think I'm, you know, rampaging to once again kick the damn thing out. Yeah, well, as I mentioned just a minute ago, um, the economic opportunity designation was brought up in a general way at the work session. And while I can't remember exa the exact terminology that was used, it, my understanding was a desire to talk to the working group about the purpose and the need for the EO designation or the utility of it um, may be another way of stating that. So again, I don't know the exact words used, but um, that's, uh, that was one of the items. Well, I don't understand the word utility of the EO versus uh, MCI or MCR designation, I guess, is the issue. And, I mean, there's been some discussion of getting rid of the EO by the staff. And in fact, just looking at MCI, MCR, is that what we're talking about? Um, no, I, I, I don't know that there's uh, there's been a suggestion of, of what in particular it would change to. Um, Again, just this is a preliminary input from the the board, so I, I don't. I, I think I think we'll we'll all gain a lot from uh, attending that meeting and hearing uh, what the board members have to say. I, I think if you're asking somebody about. from the planning commission to talk about it, knowing what we want to talk and address their points would be more helpful than what we have right now and the points that I've gone through. N number two, let me switch. Is I, I talked about this issue a number of meetings ago, and that is we didn't want to end up with them finding about ENV 3.7.2 3 
and that we support it. And what came out of the priorities is we do. And we ought to be able to tell the board that we do support the fact of one lot for 20 acres and it shouldn't be a surprise. And if they wanna ask us why we did that, we ought to be able to tell them that. I don't think we ought to show up at a public hearing in June and not have discussed this issue with the Board of Supervisors at this meeting. Yeah, that, that would be part of that rural lands item. Yeah, we, we did uh, brief the board in April um, on that preliminarily, uh, but again, this is an opportunity to make sure they have all that information, for sure. We don't, we don't want any surprises for anybody. Yeah, Ellen, I don't want to be argumentative I know that there's some board members that want to support it, but I don't think they know about the impacts. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, why don't we do some more work on this and um, I'll keep uh, either I or Ellen will keep everybody informed of, of how we're proceeding on these, um, these issues and how we're going to, uh, uh, interact with the board on the 25th. Good enough. I think that's a that's a great idea, Jack. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Um, any other items for discussion? Any? I I would just like to suggest um, uh, that we begin using our new name um, in communications and so forth. I know it hasn't been adopted by the board yet, but um, it, it, you can't start too early on branding. And um, um, anyway, uh, that's it for me. Any other comments, questions? Um, all. Hey, Jack, I do have a question. Um, yes, talking about the title that we chose for the comp plan, uh -huh. um, does the, the board have to sign off on that before we start using that in any communications? I don't know. I mentioned that. I. Um... Well, that's a that's a really good uh, question. If the working group would like, we could include that um, sort of in the the recommendation category within uh, the materials going to them. Why don't you, Ellen? I think that's that's a great idea. Maybe I was jumping the gun. Well, I just figured I didn't want anybody to get their knickers in a knot if they yeah. felt that we decided what the name of the county comp plan was going to be without the board um, saying it was a, a good idea or not. Yeah, good point. Okay. Frank, you, your hand is up. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgot to take it down. That's what I thought. But uh, okay. Thank you. Um, if nobody else has anything to add, I'll certainly entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. Good meeting, everybody. Thank you for your help, and um, have a good evening. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.